welcome to another Dawn and Julia Create. It is so nice to have your company this evening. So Dawn has set the challenge this time and I'm in my element. She has asked us to make two mixed media tags. I am so in the zone, I am so excited. So let's just grab a whole bunch of randomness and all our mixed media mediums and have a lovely time crafting together. So this is a little folder that I keep with various substrates. These are all just odds and ends, bits of packaging and bags and all sorts of goodness that I knew could be turned into something beautiful one day. So I knew this was the perfect place to look to find the base for my mixed media tags. So I was intrigued by this one. I thought it was quite an interesting shape. I've gone for interesting shapes today. And then I decided that if I took the back off, we could have a sort of cool aperture look on our tag. So I've just left that little bit of paper that didn't come off because again I thought it would be good for layering different textures and then I decided to come in with some corrugated card as well because why not? And let's face it, Dawn's going to guess that I'm going to use cardboard so I may as well let her have that one. So I've cut this down to size just to kind of get a rough idea. I still want to leave a little bit of a gap though. I really like the idea of there being that sort of empty space and then toward the edge to add texture. <laughs> the sewing machine is out. I created about three Dawn and Julia creates in the one session. So I was working on three different projects. So the sewing machine was out for the last one and I'm addicted. I absolutely love it. Um, sewing was where my crafting passion started. I started sewing about the age of 11, worked in a fabric shop. So I've not had it out in ages and it feels so good and I love it. And it was just there. So, you know, whilst it was there, um, these projects just needed stitching on them. <laughs> um, it's added texture, um, which when you're building a mixed media project, that is really what you're wanting to go for. Lots of different textures. And also for this one, I kept all of those loose threads as well. Again, thinking it would add those elements of interest. So time to get out my texture paste. This is the Pretty Gets Gritty one. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so thick and creamy, perfectly white, and actually dries reasonably quickly too. And I've pulled out some of my stencils. This one is Rose Trellis. And I like these because we've got the abstract shapes alongside soft florals. And I think it really works really well. And then I've also just taken a little bit of extra texture paste to kind of glue down those um, wayward threads. So it was a way of sticking them down, but not losing them either. And then the second tag gets the same treatment. I'm just going to tear that down so we maintain the shape that we had because I picked this tag for its shape. Um, so I get rid of that and again we use a stencil. This one is Picnic Blanket and again we've got those roses and then the little squares. So we've got the combo of the abstract and florals. So here is how they look at this stage. So now to add some mixed media goodness. This box is full of goodies. Some of these things are bits that I have bought. Some of them like the big flower there, that's a bit of broken jewellery. Um, so I just sort of squirrel broken toys, broken jewellery and any bits and pieces that I find all get saved away in these boxes. And now it was time to sort of pull apart different elements and see what I like. So I was building this one up. Um, I really didn't know what to do with the second smaller one. I was liking the look of the long one. Um, but uh, once I got that flamingo there, I suddenly was like Alice in Wonderland. It has to be Alice in Wonderland. So I've got this gorgeous dress that has been in my stash forever. It came in a craft box UK thing ages ago and it's been one of those things that is too pretty to use. Don't do that. Use your stash and make gorgeous things out of them. Um, so once I got the Alice in Wonderland idea, I was flying with that particular design um, and so got all of the elements together. Now my biggest tip when it comes to mixed media and using elements is don't spread them across the page. Layer them on top of each other. It looks far more cohesive and united and if you sit there and think my mixed media just doesn't look like other people that do it. It could be that very reason that you are separating all of your elements and putting them down across the page. Whereas if you actually start putting them on top of each other, it really does make a difference to the design. So again, I've gone in this um, diagonal down the page. And then I've also, with the die cuts from the Time for Tea dies, we have these playing cards in them. And I've die cut quite a few and I've glued about four of them together. So it almost gives a sort of chipboard thickness, even though we're working with a die cut. And I absolutely love die cuts for that. I think they are awesome. 
um, and yeah you can really easily get 3D mixed media elements from your dies without the cost of chipboard because obviously your dies you can keep reusing and reusing um, but chipboard once it's gone onto a project that is it so we pop those down and leave all of that to dry whilst that's drying we work on the next one so I pulled out some of those frames that were to the side um, and again I think this works really well because we've got kind of got that frame in the background with the aperture we're kind of building on that idea so again just sticking this down now the reason I use gel medium with a mixed media project is gel medium does have an element of flex to it so your projects will naturally expand and contract with moisture in the air and gel medium allows for that movement and um, so you're not going to get things pinging off so whilst your hot glue guns are brilliant this one is going to give you a more permanent adhesion it does take a little bit longer to dry but as i mentioned earlier i was working on three dawn and julia creates at the same time so I was having a mixed media session and I would highly recommend that you do it like that, that you have things like this is drying and then I start working on something else, so on and so forth. So they got the gesso treatment. As I was gessoing the Alice in Wonderland one, I realised that one of the elements must have had some sort of blue stain on it and the blue kept coming through no matter how much gesso I put on it. So we're going for a blue colour scheme, which is just as well because that works really well with Alice and Wonderland. So I've got my Kurotake Gansi Tambi paints out. This is the Art Nouveau set and I'm just adding little bits of this soft blue um, around the project. So just dabbing that on in various places. I'm sort of thinking of my shadow areas in the, at this point. So it's things in and behind. And then I decide to add a, a little bit of green to the mix as well. So we get that um, dabbed on and then we will pull out our water right now and just give that a spray. I love doing this technique. It is so organic. You have no idea where that paint's going to go. Yes, you can control it by how you're moving it a little bit. But at the end of the day, you don't have control. It's going to do its thing and let it do its thing. That is part of the joys of this technique. Um, and it's you very often come out with some beautiful blends and yeah, just a gorgeous, gorgeous mix. I just love watching paint move around a project. It's just incredibly satisfying. So I let all of that dry. And then this time I've pulled out my acrylic paints. So I've got this gorgeous, um, kind of like a Cinderella blue color. This one has also got a slight sheen to it. And um, then I'm going to pull out a slightly darker blue and some white as well. And that's gonna give me my dark mid-tone and highlight in a project. So I'm kind of covering the dress then I'm going to add a little bit of pink to the flamingo. So I'm adding a little bit of colour back into some of the various elements um, just to kind of lift it a little bit. Um, quite often when I do this I colour first um, but I decided to sort of do it this way around this time and it still worked so it's all good. I um, decided to colour in these playing cards with alcohol markers. It seemed the easiest way to get a permanent colour down and also this isn't going to move as I start to add other elements um, as the project goes along as it is permanent. So we're kind of stuck with that. Um, and now we go in for a second coat just to add a little bit of depth of colour to the shadow um, of the dress. So I normally would give something like this two or three coats to build up the layers and to build up the shadow areas. I do often feel with mixed media we can have a tendency to still paint things flat but I would treat it the same as I treat any sort of coloured images and work for those highlights, shadows and mid-tones. I decided it was all just looking a bit pale and the elements weren't really popping. You couldn't really see all the extra um, goodness. So I've gone in with a darker colour and look how much it shows up the texture of that cardboard once the darker colour goes in. So I'm just building up that there just again so that we make the actual elements pop off the page. To bring back some of the texture, I am doing some dry brushing with some gesso. Um, to be honest, when I did this, I felt it was kind of looking a little bit lost. It wasn't making the hugest amount of difference. So I switched to a silver. Now I don't have a silver acrylic, so this is a silver watercolor. It didn't quite give the same effect because it was sort of dripping into the nooks and crannies a little bit rather than sitting on top of it as it should. 
but I still like the way that it looked and it just added that little extra element and detail and I think it worked really well. It gave it a lovely sort of distressed look but the fact it was silver, it's high gloss and I'm a little bit luxurious and I don't know, I love putting precious metals onto cardboard. I love the irony of it. I think it's brilliant because this is just a cardboard scrap packaging and we've turned it into a work of art. It's brilliant. Uh, to bring those pinks through the entire project, I'm just adding a little bit of pink splatter to the tag. Um, and then I've taken a sentiment. This is from my Curious Wonders paper pad and it just says Wonderland. I did have a full sentiment, but I didn't think it worked very well. So we've just got Wonderland and then that just brings the pink. And also the pink now is in three separate places on the project, which uniforms it a little bit. So to make this into a proper tag, I've got these little tassels. I keep additioning different ones up, trying to decide which one to go for. Um, I was very, very tempted by this blue, but then I saw in the corner of my eye, there was a pale pink one. I'm just about to clock it now. <laughs> it's like I can foretell what's going to happen. <laughs> there it is, there's that pink one there. And I still am undecided. Honestly, it took me so long to decide which tag to use. It was beyond ridiculous. But I think in the end, the pink one won. So once I'd finally decided, I then get out my crocodile and just punch a hole. It's great. It punches through anything. So all those mixed media layers, not a problem. And then we add the little tag into this particular one and complete the project. And I'm in love with it. It's so gorgeous. I love anything else in Wonderland. But yeah, absolutely delighted with this little project. Now, I have been filming for many, many years and yet somehow I forgot to turn the camera on while doing the coloured part of this and I'm gutted because this one turned out so gorgeous. So I'm just pointing out the colours to you that I did actually dabble on. So those four colours went on and then I sprayed it with water the same as I did with the other one and that was the results. I'm still gutted that you didn't actually get to see that. I'm heartbroken, I can't believe I did that. Anyway, we're now getting to the brushing stage again. I'm using a very liquid acrylic, so it didn't quite work as it normally does, but it did add um, the touch of gold and luxury that I do so love to put on a mixed media project. So this is um, the um, Anna Hurston one. I can't remember what it's called. It's a, it's a liquid acrylic anyway. And I've gone in with the gold and this metallic green because it was the same colours as the background. I feel like I need to make another project now with the same colours just so that I can film that particular colour blend mix because it was stunning. Um, I decided it had all got a bit too shiny and I actually really liked how it was when it was a lot more white in the project that kind of sung to me a bit more so I've gone back in with the gesso and I'm just knocking back some of that metallic colour not all of it um yeah and I like the results in the end so I've got out my zig marker which is a metallic marker I needed to activate it because despite this having been my stash for years and years and years and years I've not used it so it's good that it's finally getting a use and then I have used the gorgeous foiled sentiments available by Dawn. So these are on the Shiny Silver Treasures website. Oh, they are lush. I think these are the vintage, I want to say vintage sentiments. I'm sure Dawn will correct it in the comments. But yeah, I will find which ones they're actually from and link in the description box below. And these just matched so beautifully with the metallic paint that was on this particular project. So I've just put three of those sentiments down and that's that one done. And I love that little gap. I don't know what it is, but that just makes me really happy. I absolutely love it. Dawn is a mixed media queen. So please do pop across and see what she has created because she'll have knocked it out of the park. And I cannot wait to see. Bet she used black gesso and metallic paint. I'm just putting that out there. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy mixed media, you might like this playlist too.